here we are in the mayor's office. Her worship, uh, Deb Higgins, is with us today, and uh, I managed to get in between <laughs> meetings. Busy lady. It is busy. It's all good, uh, but yeah, it's been busy. Yeah, I understand that you were talking to uh, the former mayor saying, you know, you never told me about... Because so one of the things that people think is that you just come to your office and that you go to meetings at night and, and perhaps uh, go to some openings, but there is a lot of time demand on the mayor in the city. Uh, the days are fairly busy and it's actually, um, I think, shifted a wee bit too with the makeup of council. Uh, because we have some younger folks on council now that are holding down other jobs. So that means we need to be a little more flexible in when we arrange things. But no, days are busy and uh, there's always meetings or community events in the evening. So, but it's good. Yeah. Well, so you've had four months and uh, we were talking before we went on air that things, budget time, of course, highlights a lot of things that have to be dealt with. but. Boy, there's a lot of things to be dealt with. <laughs> no, there is. Uh, I think about, oh, it was the week before I was sworn in that we had the big snowstorm with, what, 45 or 50 centimeters of snow. So that kind of started it off, and we haven't really got much of a break as far as snow removal and the weather goes. And the melting and freezing and more snow is just going to wreak havoc with the roads once it all does melt. Uh, budget. Budget's been busy and I think for those of us that are new on council it's just a time to kind of settle in and get our bearings about us and get a good understanding of how the protocol works and the process in council. Yeah, because there are a lot of uh, things that have come up, a lot of things come up. One, when you talked about snow, I'm, every day I go to Yara Place, I look across the street and I'm going like, I hope it doesn't all melt at once, it'll be like 1974 or over again. Yeah, it's, there's been planning meetings done uh, over the last couple of weeks for emergency measures and to make sure that everything's in place. Mm -hmm. And we'll keep watching the reports that are coming out of the Water Security Agency because they're doing all their, you know, predictions for the spring and all that kind of stuff. So we'll keep tabs on those. And But in the meantime, there has been meetings held that will make sure we're prepared for whatever happens in the spring. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it's a slow melt. Can you put in a request? Slow melt, nice mild spring. I put in a request for a nice winter, so I can, <laughs> don't talk to me. <laughs> but uh, so the, some of the things that are, are, are have come up, and uh, we're starting to reap uh, the the uh, the decisions of past councils about, about not making bigger jumps, and now you've got infrastructure of your sewers and water, the roads, um, the traffic patterns, is that a traffic thing? Uh, released. There's just a lot of things that are coming at one time now. Well, they are, and I guess it's the age-old uh, problem, out of sight, out of mind. So while water and sewer, you know, they're should have been, they're underground, we don't see them. Unless there's problems, we don't have to deal with them. As long as things are working fine, you know, you kind of ignore it and go about your day. And I can't make, I can't comment on previous decisions that councils mm -hmm. before yeah. ours made. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whatever the pressures were at that time and whatever influenced their decisions, that's over and done with. And what we have to deal with is kind of the here and now and what's mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. So in this year's budget, we have a proposal to do a a kind of a utilities master plan that will look at replacement for infrastructure, what we have to do, uh, the order it should be done in, and what all it will entail. And I think that's a good starting point for us. And yeah, and move on from here. I think it's time. I mean, and I think people realize it too. We just need to. Uh, get a plan in place, how we're going to do this, and get down to business and get it done. Yeah. It, it's just, it has to be done. There's no, I don't think there's any options to keep delaying a lot of this work that's, that is needed. Well, one of the good things that was done is that the water 
uh, filtration mm -hmm. uh, program has been done in Moose Jaw, where Regina still has to deal with that, and it's like a $100 million thing for them. Yeah, our w wastewater treatment plant was done, uh, but we do have a couple big projects on the water treatment side mm -hmm. at the plant out at Buffalo Pound and the pipeline coming in. And those will be done in partnership. The pipeline is ours, but the plant will be done in partnership with the city of Regina. So that's something that's coming at us in the next few years. But uh, yeah, it, there's some big projects yeah. out there. And housing as well? Housing as well. Now we got lots of activity uh, going on in the city. And it's it's kind of interesting. You know, we, we took a city map and marked on it the projects and where a lot of the activity is happening. And it really is spread throughout the city. Um, you know, you can go northwest, um, southwest, you can go to the east, and it's housing. And when we're looking, we were just looking at lots for Habitat for Humanity, and we had some difficulty finding some infill lots in the community that were good for Habitat for Humanity. A lot of infill housing, and we're running out of properties quickly, so. Number four on the way, though. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. So that's good. And it's a great project and involves the community and uh, some well, well-deserving families have been uh, housed in some very nice accommodation. And it's, it's great. It, it, it's just a good project, community project. Yeah. And of course, we have uh, seen the need in the community for a, mm -hmm. for a lower income housing. Of course, the government has got some stuff going on too with their uh, ideas of how they're going to deal with replacing uh, the, ho the housing that uh, the mortgage and housing controls, and that's a big deal. But there's some uh, some upper scale housing going on too. Uh, of course, the development of the Grant Hall, which we had on this year, Aww. did you get to go through there? No, I didn't, Aww. and I wish I had of. Yeah. It's uh, fabulous, and I hear that. Uh, it, they've just done a fabulous job with it. So. Well, for those people watching out there, you can, uh, if you've got a computer, you can look on YouTube, oh. look up Shaw, uh, Shaw TV Moose Shaw, and uh, there's a segment in there where we went through, and, and Greg was able to get some pictures of things in there, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's quite, mm -hmm. quite well done. Yeah, and a nice tribute in there to former Mayor Al Schwinghammer, which is in the in there too. So. Yeah. Well, do you know, it's just one more of the, the historic buildings in the city of Moose Jaw that it's nice to see restored mm -hmm. and going to play an active part in the community. And it's, uh, I, I mean, don't you just shake your head sometimes and think, uh, why did it take us so long to start appreciating the history of the community and all of the good things that have happened here or are going on here? And, and yet our community is known Yes. for the, the, the uh, way it's been able to retain its heritage. And of course, when the River Street development comes along, that's going to have another heritage theme to it yeah. with all the modern conveniences of how uh, development is done down there. Well, it's funny, you know, you'll talk to people in Regina and they'll say, well, they come to spend the weekend in Moose Jaw, come to spend the day in Moose Jaw. And they say, you know, the nice thing is you can park your car and you can walk anywhere you want to go. And I keep thinking, hmm, and for all of us that live here in Moose Jaw, we'll drive around the block and around the block oh, and yeah. around, looking, for, <laughs> looking for a closer parking spot. So it's, uh, it's all about uh, your perspective, I guess, but it is, it's a great community. Yeah. Yeah. So, and um, for you personally, what have you been happy with for yourself about, about the job and since you got into it? I absolutely love being involved in the community and like, I'm, I'm surprised that it, there's not a day go by that you aren't pleasantly surprised by something that's going on or uh, activities in the community or, or things that are happening at the schools or, I mean, it just goes on and on. There's so much happening in a community of this size and it's, uh, it's just good things, good things happening and it's a great community. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's one thing we all want to grow. We all want to see economic development and the city expand but we don't want to lose that community spirit and that community feel so yeah. it's a big well, part of us. Some of the decisions that have lately come up out of council of course you, when you're talking about growth and development you uh, the council has approved uh, the hiring of a second city planner. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it is. There's a, a real pressure on City Hall to get some of the uh, planning for development done. Uh, we, right now we have one planner and we need, we're looking to try and augment her, her department and put another person in there. Final decisions will be made on Monday night at the council meeting. Everything needs council approval, so pass through the initial stages. Uh, but I think pretty well everyone agrees that it's a position that's needed and uh, we need to be able to get the work done and kind of support the development and activity that's out there. Yeah. Is there anything that you are not happy with yet? About not the budget? happy with yet? Yeah. With, with, the, with the position. <laughs> Just, just, we only have two minutes left. We only have two minutes. <laughs> um, anything I'm not happy with? Uh, well, I'm kind of dreading pothole season, but this gets back to the, the whole conversation we had previously about infrastructure and mm -hmm. what needs to be done. And I don't think there's anybody in the city that knows it's going to be or doesn't realize it's going to be a rough spring on the roads. And it's the age-old problem, you know, out of sight, out of mind. But many of those underground pipes and infrastructure need to be replaced. So, you know, you can't very well pave over the top of it until you get the, the major underground things done. If you have any, if there's any consolation to you, yes. uh, the local radio station ran a survey today and said to people, with the pothole season coming, would you be, would you be willing to have an extra additional percentage on your taxes to deal with them faster 75 percent said no so they're Are you so they're <laughs> i guess they're prepared to put up with it well do you know what and even to i, I mean we'll be patching potholes and yeah. i mean that's been happening already on some of the days when it's been melting uh but you really do have to address the underground infrastructure yeah, sure. before it'd be like putting a you know new, fresh coat of paint on a wall that uh, you knew there was problems behind the walls, so it's you know you got to make sure you're doing them in the right order and utilizing taxpayers' dollars the best you can. Well, Your Worship, thanks for taking time out of. You just finished one meeting when we got here, and uh, and I don't know what's on for the rest of the day, but I know that the desk is is getting some. There, there is a desk <laughs> underneath there, so that's good. So thanks very much. Thank you very much, Lyle. Good to see you, and you come on over anytime. Okay, we will. So uh, that wraps it up for today uh, here in the mayor's office. Thanks uh, to my guests for being here. And thanks to you for watching. We'll see you again soon. I'm Moose Jaw this week. Opinions expressed on the program you have just watched are not necessarily those of Shaw Cable Systems or of this station. Through our access policy, we provide the opportunity for community groups and individuals to express their points of view.